For more videos, visit for the sake of education.com or become an official student at patreon.com forward slash Daxter Bells. Alright guys, this is a problem that says replace the loading system acting on the post by an equivalent resultant force about A and then do the same thing about B. So this is very simple because let's assume that this is F1, this is F2, this is F3. Okay, so to find the resultant force, all you got to do is add all the forces. So you need to find the Cartesian vector form of each of these forces, and that's what we're going to do. F1 has an X component and a Y component. The X component is given by the magnitude, and we're given the angle 30 degrees, so it's given by the magnitude times the sine of 30 degrees, 325, and it's positive because it's going towards the right. In the Y we have the magnitude which is 650 times the cosine of 30 degrees and it's going down so it's negative 562.9. Therefore the Cartesian vector form of F1 is equal to 325i minus 562.9 in the J. F2 is simple because it's going straight down, so it's negative 300j. And F3 has an x component, F3x and F3y. In the x uh, is given by the magnitude, which is 500, that's the cosine of 60. And it's negative because it's going towards the left. And 500 times the sine of 60. And it's negative because it's going down. So this is negative 250 in the i, minus 433 in the j. Now that we have the Cartesian vector form of F1, F2, and F3, you can add the i's with the i's, the j's with the j's, to get the resultant force, which comes out to be 75i minus 1295.9j. Now they want this in um, polar form. So to find the polar form, you got to do 75 square plus 1295.9 square, all that square rooted, and you're going to get that the magnitude is 1298 newtons. And to find the angle, you do the tangent inverse of negative 1295.9 over 75. And you get that the angle is 86.7 degrees, and it's going down like that. In this case, I did uh, the tangent inverse of 1295.9 over 75 to get this angle. And actually, yeah, negative 1295. Okay, perfect. So now we are going to find the resultant uh, moment about A. And we're going to assume that counterclockwise is positive. So about A, the ones creating a uh, a moment are F1 in the Y. F1 in the X is not creating a moment because it's going straight towards A. F3 in the Y. F3 in the X is not creating a moment because it's going straight towards A. And we have this 1500 Nm moment right here. So the moments on uh, about A are F1 in the Y times 3 and it's positive because it's creating a counterclockwise moment minus f3 in the y times 5 and it's negative because it's creating a counterclockwise moment plus 1500 so once you plug in f1 y and f3 y f3 y is here if uh, one of y is here you're gonna get that the moment is 1023.7 newton meters counterclockwise because it's positive Now, that's it for the first one. Now, for the second one, we have to find the resultant force, which is the same one. We already found it. And the sum of the moments at B, assuming counterclockwise kind of is positive. Now, the sum of the moments at B is are created by F1Y, by F2Y, 
by F3Y, not by the X's because they're going towards V and away from V, and this 1500 meter moment. Therefore, the sum of the moments at B comes out to be F1Y times 10 plus F2Y times 7 plus F3Y times 2 plus 1500. And this comes out to be 10, 0, 9, 5 newton meters. And since it's positive, it's going kind of clockwise. This is the sum of the moments at B. Gotta love my beautiful handwriting. So sum of the moments at B, final answer. Sum, uh, sum of the moments at A, final answer. And the resultant force for both problems, final answer.